Welcome back. Here's uh, here's where we left off with the pile of failures. It's getting kind of high. The sh if I counted even remotely correctly, this is like 400 keycaps, and uh, I'm gonna add them to the the pile of failures. This will be a satisfying way to start, I think. Last one. Boom. And here's where we left off with the keyboard. And so the 3D printer I need to fix still, but the sort of topic of this video is gonna be the, the different resins. So the one that came the, with the printer is the uh, Anycubic resin, which uh, I don't, I'm gonna put that away because I don't think that's gonna be the one for us. What are promising to me are, are these three. So now we're gonna transition back to the, the printer but now when I get the printer dialed into this resin, then I can hopefully, theoretic, maybe not theoretically, hopefully make the transition to these different resins a little bit easier, given that I've remedied the issues that are likely having to do with the printer rather than this resin itself. So a more detailed tour of the 3D printing station here. So any cubic photon with Elegoo standard clear photopolymer resin. And there are uh, 41 layers per key. The first set of layers are uh, cured for 30 seconds. There are 14 of them. And the remaining layers are cured for 17 seconds, which I think is pretty far above what is recommended by, uh, by the resin manufacturer. Layer height is uh, 0.05 millimeters. I'm using these uh, Nurtex special gloves. Uh, I'm reusing them. That's probably not safe. I have some usable ones, but it's like pandemic. Um, this is a little art table I use to keep all the resin in one place when I'm knocking the uh, keys off the build plate. The ultrasonic cleaner has a heater in it and it heats up and that seems really dangerous for something so flammable and poisonous. So I don't put it directly in. I have water in the ultrasonic cleaner and I, I put them in a, a little uh, little jar and that helps. I put them in for three minutes and that's way longer than they say you should have them submerged. So maybe that's something I have to fix as well. But they seem to I seem to get better results back the first time I tried when I turned up the numbers a little further. Except for in the last stage, this is a an old record player with this like heat blanket around it and uh, a UV light at the top that shines in to uh, so when the turntable spins it's sort of the idea is that you you get more light on the on the keys uh, from all angles I put them all in these little coffee filter things here um, there's a little little orange thing here that's really really useful it's a like a, a vinyl wrap applicator thing. It's like a, a little uh, shaving razor blade, but it's made out of plastic and it's much more useful than the, the crappy little like shovel thing that you get with the 3D printer. So I'm going to do one full walkthrough of removing this print and uh, and maybe if, uh, if I run into problems, we'll talk about each of those as we go. Okay, so the standard photopolymer resin translucent from Elegoo is what is in this vat right now. There's just a sort of small layer of it. The film at the bottom of this blue square thing is like a, a clear film that lets the, a certain type of light or wavelength of light go through, I think. They call it FET film. There's a big long name for it. I don't know what it is. And the screen is below that. So those little spots you see there, I think are bits of resin that somehow got under the film and are touching the screen. That hasn't been too big of a problem in the past. So I'm gonna try and print over it again. But first I'll remove the print that's sitting up here on the build plate. This is actually from maybe two weeks ago. So I'll pull this off and we'll take a look at it. And if there's a problem, then we'll, we'll troubleshoot that a bit more. I also got some new uh, isopropyl alcohol 
that, uh, that I can use with the, the new resins because I don't think any of these are water washable. For the record, there's a, a fire extinguisher back there and there's nothing in this garage that I know of or that should make like sparks or anything like that. Also got a big uh, air filter thing. Let's see if we can get a good look at these actually. So the, the grain on the top of the keys basically matches the grain on the bottom of this build plate here. So I wonder if, I've been wondering if I, I got a second one or something like that, a backup, if I could try and like put uh, swirls on it somehow, see what happens with that. This is the tool I was talking about highly recommend it for this application. It's sharper than sharper than this little thingy. So I read that you're meant to sort of like try and brush all the excess resin off of them. But I, I couldn't find a good way of doing that without like contaminating them. So I just sort of set them on paper towel and try and get as much as I can. And then uh, cover them with uh, isopropyl alcohol like so. Just enough. Different angle. So at this point, if I had two thumb drives going, I could uh, I could start a whole new print theoretically. I was just reading an article that that had said that um, 30 seconds is all all the time it should be submerged in alcohol. So apparently I've been putting them on too long. And that might be one of the causes of the, uh, of the failures. And I gotta pick these out now one by one, or not one, as many as I can. Then I try and spread them out as best I can. They're still a little wet here. And then I put them in the, in the toaster oven here for uh, five minutes and I, that's far too short. Uh, that's the point I should have mentioned earlier is that uh, some of the specifications for the resins I've been reading say that these should be in here for 15 minutes but if I do that then they get really yellow and toasted like the like in the previous video and some of the failures I have so it's sort of like this weird double-edged sword thing. All right, I'm rushing this one because these are probably failures, but they, they come out like this. Hopefully drier than this. We're gonna, let's take a closer look somewhere else. Uh, so these are clearly still wet. They're supposed to be dry before they even go in the toaster, but I'm pretty sure, actually I'm, I'm wrong. I was gonna say, I think these are failures just like the last time, but Actually, these might these might fit on the on the keyboard. Hold on, let's get it. So these these keys were sitting there on that on that build plate for uh, for a week. Still have a bit of yeah. See that first layer's got something coming off of it. And you can see those first fourteen layers are the yellow ones. I, what I do is I, I go to whatever the face is, and the the little hinges start. That's where I start to do the the shorter seventeen second 
layers. And uh, looking at looking at these ones who have, that have been sitting and attached, some of them are curved convex, and some of them are concave. Some of them like live a little bit higher. You can see it's clear in the shift key. Like it still works and everything's attached, but it's like bowed a little bit. And I think that I think that might have to do with the fact that it's been in light. And if like once these are painted, you can get like UV uh, protecting paint for them, uh, like a, a base clear coat that will help. Um, but let's see if these, these fit there first. Stuck. Let's try the other one. This one keeps getting stuck. No matter every model I do gets stuck. This is print number 51. So I have to take my hat off to the uh, the any cubic guys, people, because in the, in the past two months, yeah, this one's stuck too. Past uh, two months, it's been since uh, I restarted this 51 prints, and it just sat out doing nothing all winter in my garage. That one's stuck. Are these all gonna be stuck? That one's not stuck. Okay, we're making progress here. I think, I think it's safe to... I think I wanna try to space bar in some of these function keys though before I move on to another resin. I'll, I'll mark a steward that to print uh, 52 behind the scenes. Oh, now we damaged that one. Oh, it works. Right there, I think it broke off there, and uh, that's where it switches from 30 seconds to 17 seconds is like right at that point, and that's what all those little artifact pieces were in uh, the last video. So I'm gonna try the I'm gonna try the space bar and the function keys one more time, and then we'll switch resins. I was wrong; it didn't it didn't break off, but if um, if we look at these, one of the big, so there's that like cave-in problem here, kind of. That's one of the big issues with this. And then another one of the problems is how easily, like these mounting pieces, they pop off really easily. Here we go. So everything that's just fallen off there got 17 seconds of exposure. And then this whole flat piece here got the 30 seconds. So. I'm not sure what to make of that, and I'm hoping that some of the other resins will, will fix that. Hopefully also the, the sizing is, is correct with them. A little tip here with the print 52. You, uh, you set the build plate sideways and you let some of the excess drip off before you scale the build plate like a fish. That is stuck. So that's function key model still not working. And here's the spacebar key with the little metal pieces in it. They uh, swivel freely and I, I'm sure the same kind of bowing that happens on this uh, on these keys is gonna happen with the spacebar. But uh, I'll try and attach this kind of tough with these metal bars, but I'll give it a shot.
That might be as close as I'm gonna get with the space bar. It looks, uh, it looks pretty good. Like if I, touch, if I hit it in the center, it looks right. Both hinges are moving on both sides. All the little metal bars are in place. Actually, it's starting to feel better. Except I just don't trust that it's gonna actuate 100% of the time on either side. But that's a pretty good start. I'm gonna leave the function keys for later. That's the most difficult part, really. All right, here's the plan. So I'm gonna compare the, the ABS-like resin, the blue clear V2, and the tenacious resin uh, with uh, these four rows of 10 keys. So I'll keep this top row with the standard resin and uh, I've got the Sariatek blue loaded in there with uh, just some, some bubbles in there. Temperature is 20 degrees, so it's, a, it's the low end of what, the, what this resin wants on the, the data sheet that I found, but we'll give it a try. So this is, I believe, 30, no, 60 seconds for the first 14 layers, and then uh, 13 seconds for the remaining letters in, uh, in the blue. Maybe there'll be some bubbles in it. I'll just press play, whatever. All right, here's the, here's the Sariatek Clear V2, Clear Blue, Clear V2. And uh, so I printed 10, 10 keys. One of them appears to have gotten stuck. And I think what it does, I'll try and focus on that. What it does is it sort of like just flashes the same spot every time. And that's when like the first few layers get stuck to the to the FET film rather than the, the build plate. Come on, focus. But those ones look all right. So we'll, we'll try the same process, same like maybe two minutes in the cleaner and then five minutes in there and uh, see what it looks like. Here's the clear blue V2. One of them, so one of them stuck and then this one broke off and then, but looking at it, the, um, L shape that holds the the mounting piece to the to the base looks very thin and it kind of looks that way on the rest of them too but I'm gonna give it a shot try this row no no sound at all Nothing looks to have broken off, but. No click sound, call that a failure. Call that a failure. Yeah, that one kind of works. It doesn't seem like it clicked into place. I can, they're the right size, but they're, they're not going into place. There's no click sound and it doesn't look like, oh no, that one broke off and that one broke off. Okay. So blue V2 kind of not working well in the normal settings. I'm going to switch it up to the, the settings I used before on the standard resin. Maybe that'll work. Before I change the settings, I've done two things here. I've spread out all of the keys so they're a little more spread out. I've, I've, I guess I've also cleaned up the, the printer a little bit. 
it should be ready to go. But I also read reread the the spec sheet for the blue resin, and it says it wants the room temperature of greater than 20 degrees, and uh, and the resin has to be a little bit warmer than that. So I've got this little uh, heat tool that's not on. All right, the little thermometer I stuck in there says 25.6. It says it wants this resin 25 to 30 degrees. Uh, so let's give it a try. Be back in uh, 24 minutes. Here's the latest batch. Looking at the same kind of thing where the pieces, uh, the mounting pieces are like really thin for some reason. Um, let's check out like one of the standard resin. I think each of these is supposed to be about uh, 0.8 millimeters wide. So this one seems a little more right than this one. Let's see if I can... Notice how they're like, like way thinner for some reason. I'm not sure what that is. Let's give it a try anyway. Maybe it's stronger. Right here are the two other failures. That one works actually. I feel like they're really delicate though. delicate. One more and then I'll uh... That was a click. That one actually sounded really good. If it was thicker, if the mounting pieces were stronger, it seems like like that was even a, a louder, clickier click than the standard resin. Yeah, that kind of, it fits. Oh, it pops right off though. They fit really well and they click really well. They're just, uh, they fall off really easily. Uh, let me try a different, different settings and I'll, I'll put them over here. All right, here's the, here's the third print with uh, 60 seconds and uh, 60 second base layers and 20 second walls and mounting pieces. They look slightly beefier than before. Yeah, same, same problem is going to keep happening. They don't actually look much bigger now. They both came off. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna call that row and I'm gonna move on to um, tenacious and give that a try. 
when I was doing backlit keys, the idea was that they had to be clear, so clarity was really important. It's nice, I guess it was nice to see that the, the blue and the standard resins came out, come out pretty nice. Uh, looking at the Tenacious, they, they definitely look a lot more yellow. We'll see on the keyboard in a second. All right, so Tenacious was, uh, was significantly more difficult to uh, knock off the build plate, which was interesting, and they like bent um, in crazy ways when I was taking them off. Also, this is clearly a failure. It looks like the first few layer, like the first layer, I guess, uh, separated from the rest. I think, I'm, I'm not sure what this resin is for, but it's like uh, really bendy. But I'm sure one of these is gonna fit because the the mounting bits are, are in there good. I can't can't pull them off with my finger the way you could with the uh, with the blue. They're like really attached to each other. It's like rubbery. So maybe some sort of combination. Oh, there we go. That fell off. Uh, maybe some combination between like standard resin and and part tenacious uh, could be the the answer to some of these problems I'm having. That. Okay, wrong again. As I try and put these on, it seems like they are too easy to pull off. I don't know what was up with that first one, um, but uh, I'm gonna try the same thing. So as I did with the uh, with the blue. So I'm gonna up the settings a whole bunch and see what happens there. Okay, here's a Tenacious with uh, 20 seconds per layer on uh, the walls and the clips and mounts. Clips look great. The uh, first layer's messed up, but what's very bad is that the hollow part of the mounts is filled in. I think I remember seeing that with the original black resin I was using, and I'm not sure what that's from. You can It's obvious because you can see straight straight through it. So that's a that's a problem with this resin. Uh, next weekend I'll, I'll, I'll try some more. Okay, change of plan. So I've printed some of the uh, blue resin and uh, they look pretty nice. And I think I'm gonna scrap the pure tenacious line uh, row and I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna do a mixture. I'm gonna figure that out after I try these these ones out. Uh, and I'll figure out some sort of mixture maybe that I can test a combination between them all. I'm surprised, these actually feel like, like the best. Knock on wood. But all three of these have worked straight off the printer. Okay, wow, I'm really surprised. So I printed 10 of those and all 10 of them worked. I don't feel any of them coming off at all. That's that's really surprising and they're a little more blue. I originally bought this resin because I wanted to try and count, like mix a little bit in to counteract the, the yellowing from the, the clear resins. But it seems like they might need, like I could get away with 50-50 mix of the ABS and the standard. It might be what I try next year, and if I get slightly, we'll, we'll, then we'll check the color and uh, and see how that goes. I'll test that out. All right, here's a 50/50 mix of uh, standard and the ABS like resin, both I believe from Elegoo. All right, so now the, the winner here to me was the 50-50 mix of the standard and the ABS-like resin, both from Elegoo. Unfortunately, the clear V2 didn't print very well on my printer, and the Tenacious uh, is just the wrong material. All right, now since I have, I have three full more days to, to try at this, I'm going to try my hand at first 
trying to make one of these hinges. Uh, I'm gonna do it with the, the remaining 50-50 resin and just give a shot, give it a shot, see if I can get like a pressure fit fulcrum type mechanism out of resin, out of two pieces printed. Maybe it'll work. All right, concept proven. That was uh, that was that was pretty quick. Uh, you wouldn't get a lot of mileage out of these, but uh, I mean, theoretically, like I mean, it kind of works. And then if if this could, if I could find a way to connect this to all the like eight different points, both on the keyboard and on the key, that I have to to um, make this work, then it it could work. But also, this sort of opens the table up to like what about print it like print in place like can you print the hinge and the key all at once but i, I i'm not capable of designing something like that um obviously all right that was a little defeatist and it's the last weekend of the month so i've got a blank page here and first i need to do some shout outs for the other youtube creators who uh inspired me to do this first off is my tech fund who's done a whole bunch of different tests with different resins um, and he's, he's printed nuts and bolts and he's tested them five or six different ways and some of the resins that i used are uh, some of the resins that he used as well so big shout out to him for the inspiration second is zach friedman who recommended the zaria tech resins and third is ave who uh, is just all around a, an excellent creator with sort of a style that I, I would like to try and emulate as best I can. So the print in place idea, just sort of my sense is that maybe the hinge isn't needed at all. So current state is like a, looks like this. So this is like a, the hinge and the key, and then in the middle is the, the silicone cup that sort of holds the whole thing up. The, the print in place idea is sort of like, could you forego the hinge altogether and could you print in place something that like connects to those four points we need to connect to straight out of the, the printer? So out of, out of the printer, I imagine it would look like flat. Like so, like fold it over like a pair of glasses, kind of. But then when you attach it to the keyboard, the silicone cup would hold it all up. The issue is that I don't know if printing layers like this would work very well, but the, the it, could, it could work maybe, some more testing. I'm gonna skip that for today and leave that for another video. Right now, I'm going to mix up another batch of 50-50 from uh, the previous tests, and then we're gonna print the full set of keycaps, and I'll try and do a nice uh, time lapse, nicer than the previous videos where I keep everything centered.
goddamn right. All right, there we have it. There's keys for all keys. None of them, none of them fall off of here. This is half standard resin and half clear blue. Both are uh, Elegoo. And uh, I was noticing it at these angles, uh, the keys look a lot more blue than they did before. They're, they were yellow before, obviously, but at this angle, this kind of reminds me of one of those like rocket popsicles. All right, it's been about uh, 12 hours and these are looking better than the, than the last set for sure. If you look how straight that space bar is and the, the sort of like bowing and bending from the previous ones isn't quite as extreme, but I, I think you can kind of see it in the, in the shift key here. So these all, these all work as, as intended. The space bar looks really satisfying and I think, I think when I press on the side here, I think it would actually work. This, uh, this one, if I press on either side, I think it, I think it would click. Uh, I, I'd have to plug it in and test it out. Shift keys look quite nice as well. But some of them rub up against the, the walls. Maybe not that one, this one. You can hear it. A lot of the function keys get stuck. You can hear it. There we go, that one's stuck. So room for improvement, but this is uh, basically as far as I'm gonna get in this video. Uh, in the next video, I'm probably going to do uh, some of the, the uh, jig making for these so that I can think about painting and, and laser etching the localizations or, or the letters onto them in uh, whichever way I want and um, I guess now is also a pretty good time to do another uh, shout out because if you've made it this far in the video then you would probably like the uh, winter gutan videos as well as the ballast scissors videos the ballast scissors one there's a there's a video he did of like a project mountain and it's it's absolutely brilliant All right, that's it for this video. I am tired of 3D printing, so I'm gonna take a break from it for a little while. The next step is to set up these jigs for painting and for the, the laser etching. So I've got these four points, I put them all on, onto both the, the router and the uh, laser, set the zero to about here. And then once I've got a set of painted keys in here, then I can laser off the, the letter from them using uh, using a file I, I generate and I can put whatever I want on them. But that's in the next video. Uh, if this gets one view, I'll keep going. Bye.